Liu Shaoqi, president of New China, Mao's comrade for 30 years, was abused and beaten by Red Guards. Criticism should be like light breezes and sweet showers, Liu said. Well, I'm just saying you should be nicer to Hui Huiten. They called him China's Khrushchev, but he died naked and paralyzed of pneumonia on the concrete floor of his prison. Will Wheaton. 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 Should I hate Will Wheaton? A lot of people do. Ever since he played Wesley Crusher on Star Trek The Next Generation, the cringiest character Gene Roddenberry ever created. So, once upon a time, I was on Twitter debating Adam Baldwin, the conservative actor. You're a real comedian. This was years before Adam unfollowed me for some mysterious reason and then quit Twitter. As I remember it, I suggested to Baldwin that he hated Will Wheaton's acting just because he hated Will Wheaton's politics. Sure, sometimes Will Wheaton said stuff on Twitter that would make Mao's red guard blush. But I don't think it was a good idea to hate someone's work because of politics. So I defended Will Wheaton's acting. It's not Laurence Olivier, but it's decent. He can hold his own with a laugh track. Well, if it isn't Will Wheaton, the Jar Jar Binks of the Star Trek universe. <laughs> Misa think that very funny. <laughs> Well, Yusa can go think that at the back of the line. Then a few days after I just finished defending him, I discovered that Wheaton had blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> There's plenty of other people who've had similar experiences with Will Wheaton. Like Lee Stranahan, radio host, who'd worked with Wheaton back when Lee was at NewTek, the software company. Lee thought that they were friendly acquaintances, only to find out later that he too was blocked on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe Wheaton downloaded a bunch of block lists of people on the right. Hard to know now because he's gone private on Twitter. Probably because the folks behind Star Trek these days are trying to suck up to anti-woke critics on YouTube, trying to stem the bleeding they've received at their hands. Wheaton's woke anti-conservative screeds on Twitter are probably something Paramount wants to keep private right now. So, should I hate Will Wheaton? Let's take a minute to look at Sean Penn. Uh, Sean Penn seems like he'd stab me for no reason, that's true. Uh -huh. and, <laughs> and then immaculately stitch my wounds while telling me about his time in Haiti. Oh! His activism certainly helped install the communist dictator Hugo Chavez in power in Venezuela. Way more than just a few innocent people are dead because of this. And the country is still suffering today. Starving and dying. Travesty. But I can still separate the art from the artist. Even when the movies he chooses to be in are terrible, Sean Penn's craft is masterful. So is this mental separation I'm making between art and artist a suicidal thing to do? In other words, does compartmentalization between art and artist make oneself vulnerable to the evils the artist might do in real life? I'm sure there were plenty of people in Mao's China that thought, all I have to do is keep my head down. I can enjoy the operas starring Mao's wife and buy tickets to her show. The money I'm putting down for her shows won't ever be used against me. And yes, I'm pretty sure Sean Penn or Will Wheaton could be driven by their ideology to support an American cultural revolution. I can even see them joining an American Red Guard, one that would put me into a gulag. If Mao could imprison and allow his friend of 30 years to be murdered, well then there's nothing stopping a Red Guard Will Wheaton from tossing me into a cell. So if I don't hate Will Wheaton, would that make me complicit in my own future political imprisonment and torture? So many people on the right have decided to just walk away from movies, music, because of people like Will Wheaton. Screw Hollywood. They don't have our values. They're evil and they hate us. They just as soon kill us as look at us. So is watching the next generation suicidal? Will I one day be imprisoned in a gulag with Will Wheaton up in the guard tower laughing maniacally? Will Will Wheaton torture my family members for the crime of being related to me? I would certainly hope not, but I can't say definitively no. A further complication. Will Wheaton says that he suffers from complex PTSD and a severe anxiety panic disorder and has started taking medication for it. So a lot of the crazed Twitter blocking and deranged political manifestos could just be symptoms. I know people who suffer from anxiety disorders. I don't understand it, but I do get that it's very real to them. 
difficult to beat even with medication. And according to many recent studies like this Gallup poll from 2007, for example, mental health conditions are significantly higher for white people on the left. More so with women than men, but even men had higher rates of mental health issues. Obviously, we can't know if this is causative, correlative, or simply a matter of people on the left being more inclined to report mental health issues in a poll. And I am not mocking mental health conditions. Many people suffer from them, including some in my own family. Something else to consider, the vulnerability of actors. I myself can barely stand to edit my own voice in these videos. Most people hate to hear recordings of themselves. So imagine having to not only listen to your own voice all the time, but having to look at yourself all the time. Standing in front of a camera, not knowing if you look like an idiot or not. Then weeks or even months later, when you see the final product, you get to confirm that, oh yeah, yeah, you really do look like an idiot. Now imagine being forced to do that as a child. On his blog, Whedon claims that his childhood was stolen by his parents, sacrificed to the altar of TV and film. He says that his complex PTSD comes from severe child abuse and one of the reasons he had to fight alcoholism as an adult. I congratulate him for being sober for many years now. I lost a good friend to alcoholism. He was in my movie Hive Mind. I know how hard it is to quit and what the consequences could be if you fail. It makes me wonder if you're in the film industry and have a role for a child, is it worth it to participate in the theft of innocence just for some entertainment? Are you participating in child abuse? Knowing all of this, should I hate Will Wheaton? Sure, I can imagine him throwing me into a gulag because I'm not a virtue signaling democrat, socialist, communist, whatever, but he hasn't actually done that to me. In fact, the only thing he's ever done to me is block me on Twitter. A lot of people have done that. Megan McCain, Kirstie Alley, Matt Iglesias. Hell, I've done my own share of Twitter blocking myself. I don't know. I guess I just can't muster up enough emotion to hate Will Wheaton. I mean, I'm not going to watch a TV show or movie because he's in it. But then again, I'm not going to walk out just because I see his face. The prevailing groupthink says, hate Will Wheaton. But then again, I hate groupthink. Provided Will Wheaton refrains from running gulags, consider me a contrarian. In fact, if I was making a movie today and there was a part in it for him, I'd consider casting Will Wheaton if it was going to make the movie better. Because the art is a thing. So there you go. For now at least, I've decided to not hate Will Wheaton. But my god, he needs to stop doing these interviews. These Star Trek aftershows are just the worst, most obsequious and sycophantic interviews I've ever seen. It's 100% weaponized cringe. Shut up, Wesley. Shut up. Shut up.